Raman Bandarenka died in November 2020 in Minsk. This is the story of how the authorities in Belarus staged what appears to be an elaborate cover-up of the circumstances surrounding his death. He's one of several people killed during protests demanding the resignation of Alexander Lukashenko after he claimed a landslide victory in an August presidential election widely seen as rigged. Lukashenko gave what evidence shows to be a false account of Bandarenka's death. But this CCTV footage from the yard of a Minsk apartment block on the night of November the 11th appears to contradict the official account. Cell phone videos show masked men in civilian clothing attacking Bandarenka. <laughs> The CCTV footage shows Bandarenka being carried away. On the cell phone video, he appears to be struggling. The men throw him to the ground. This video shows a silver van arriving. Bandarenka is bundled inside. The CCTV camera says the time is 10.19 p.m. Within 50 minutes, a policeman called to request an ambulance. An alleged recording of that conversation was released in January by BIPOL, a group of former state security officers now working from outside Belarus against Lukashenko. The policeman says a man has fallen unconscious. <laughs> We cannot verify the authenticity of this recording, but previous bipolar reports have been credible. Further evidence comes from the medical examination of Bandarenka, which found serious head injuries. The following day, November the 12th, Bandarenka died in the hospital. On November the 13th, an online media outlet cited a doctor, Artyom Sarokin, for saying Bandarenka had no alcohol in his blood. On November the 19th, Sarokin and the journalist who wrote the article, Katsyarina Baresevich, were arrested. He spent three months behind bars, while she was jailed for six months for breaking medical confidentiality. Bandarenka's mother released this medical document. It clearly states there was 0% alcohol in his blood. Thousands of people attended Bandarenka's funeral on November the 20th at a church in the suburbs of Minsk. This sign says he was beaten to death by police, aged 31. Они думают, что они этим устрашили нас. Пускай не надеются. Public anger in Belarus was further stoked when prominent figures were connected to the case. Independent media cited eyewitnesses as saying that Dmitry Shakuta, a former world champion Thai boxer, was involved in the attack. <laughs> Opposition telegram channel Nechta published audio of what sounded like Shakuta discussing it with Dmitry Baskau, the head of the country's ice hockey federation. Но потом телефон когда отдавали, тяж говорит, я видел, что там фонариком ему там подсвечивали, подмолаживали там. In January, an investigation by BIPOL brought further explosive findings. It presented cell phone billing data that appeared to show that Shakuta, Baskau and Lukashenko's spokeswoman, Natalia Aismont, were present during the attack on Bandarenka. Baskau denied the allegations, but he presented no evidence for his denial. Bipol did give the correct phone numbers for both him and Aismont. Two days after Bandarenka's death, Lukashenko promised an investigation. 
but apparently one with a foregone conclusion. It was not until February that a criminal investigation was finally launched, with a statement declaring that the authorities had nothing to do with the men who attacked Bandarenka. Shakuta, Baskow and Aismont are now all on a blacklist of sanctioned individuals made public by Baltic states Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. Baskow has also been excluded by the International Olympic Committee from all its events and activities due to political repression faced by athletes who have criticised Lukashenko. Aismont is also on a European Union sanctions list for supporting what the EU called the repression and intimidation campaign led by the state apparatus.